This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's great to be back in the studio with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. We have a great show lined up for you today, and you know each and every week we talk about the big issues that are facing you as a retiree or a soon-to-be retiree. So if that's you, listen up. We're going to cover a lot of the big topics that we know could be weighing on your mind as you get close to this next phase of life. Kirk and Paul will be sharing a lot today on the show, and we'll also be telling you how you can get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming courses. And this is where you go deep into these topics so you can walk away with even more confidence and knowledge about your retirement future. We'll tell you about that in just a moment. It's great to be back with Kirk and Paul. And you know, Kirk, Paul, when it comes to being average, well, sometimes there's a benefit and sometimes there's a disadvantage. And I want to talk about this with you today. What do we need to know about being average or not average, above average, when it comes to our retirement planning? Well, I got to tell you, I, I was so excited about this show this week because I think this is where so many baby boomers take the wrong path in retirement. This is why Paul and I talk about consistently, we say as as people age, there's a stereotype that people believe that older people are cheap. And it's not that they're cheap, they're scared, right? They're scared and they've been given really poor advice about retirement planning. And here's, here's the thing. The question that we're going to try to pose to all of you today and help clarify is, are you average? And if you're not, then we want you to stop using general rules that our industry continues to promote to you. So the first question is, what does the average baby boomer have when they retire? What have they saved for retirement? And I, I think this is shocking. Paul and I, we talk about this consistently, but but I don't it's not connecting for a lot of people. Look, the average person who retires, the average baby boomer will retire with about $200,000 saved. That's all they have. That's everything they've saved for retirement. And so from that general rule that if you are retiring, the general person is only retiring with $200,000, the financial service industry has built a whole playbook on what you should or shouldn't do in retirement. And So the answer is if you're average or around average or less, you need to follow those rules. But those people who have greater resources than that, you are not average. So therefore, you don't need to follow these rules. And following these rules just is going to provide you a worse outcome in retirement than you could have. You will underspend what you otherwise could have spent. You will work longer than you need to. You will get scared every time there's a market event because you've been because if you were average, you do need to get scared when there's a major market event. You need to protect your principal. You need to reduce your spending during times of volatility. But those of you with a million, two, three, four, five million dollars, you're not average. You're not close to average. So therefore, those general rules don't have to apply. There's better rules, and we're gonna we're gonna break down for you. Why, if you are those people with more resources and you are not average, why aren't your advisors in the, in the financial service industry telling you that there's a better way and a better way for you because you are not average to plan for retirement? Does that make sense, Paul? It makes total sense. And, and again, these are things that we talk about in the class, right? These are the things that, that we, you know, really try to teach people. If you're not average, these are things that you need to do and, we spend, what, eight to 10 hours helping people identify, let's not use the general rules. This is the things you have to think about. So let's talk about the class. Paul, I'm glad you said that because we have a lot of people who listen to our show. I mean, thank you all because the amount of you that are listening to our show on a regular basis is is remarkable. And we have a tremendous amount of people coming to the class. But if you haven't been to one of our courses, and you're above average, you need to come to our courses because that's what we're going to focus on is advanced retirement planning strategies for people who are above average, have above average savings for retirement. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, if I, if I could just throw out a statistic that, that I was, I, you, I don't know if you were, but when I, when I did some research, 
I was stunned by. And I think this underscores the whole point of, of average. And I think the, the listeners will appreciate this. When you look at Social Security, right, did you look at that statistic that 40% of older adults are going to depend only on Social Security? 40%. Actually, that's the- – that's a, it's an amazing statistic. It's it's one that's been around a little bit. In fact, I've quoted a it's similar actually gone number. up. Just that's just to right. say, that's what I was going to say. It's actually gone up. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, that's exactly Paul. No, that's exactly what I was going to say because the number we used to use is we used to say about a third of baby boomers will get 90 percent of their income from Social Security. The, the whole study that says how much you that you what you need to spend in retirement, what the average retiree spends in retirement. That's where that number came from. I, you know, if people throw around that we need 78% of our income in retirement number a lot, that's such a bad number. It's such a bad data point for people who have that are above average in their savings for retirement. It doesn't even apply to you, right? Because because in, in Paul, to your point, that number is now, and I couldn't believe it when you when you found this number, the new data suggests that. Forty percent of baby boomers, that's all they're going to have to live on is Social Security. Well, when you do a study and you have that many people that only have Social Security to live on, that obviously means you're going to the average retiree is spending less in retirement. Our experience. They have no choice. They have no they, choice. That's, that's all they have, right? That's all they have. I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality for those people who have saved and have resources, and have above average resources, the data shows something very, very different. And this is what we worry about. And I, I think when we come back next segment, this is where we start is what does really people spend in retirement and what can they spend in retirement? But again, this is all taught. There's a reason why the courses that we're teaching take eight hours in length. And we teach them over one full Saturday or two evenings totaling eight hours and they're being taught at every major almost every major university in michigan we teach them at the university of michigan michigan state university oakland university uh oakland uh ms michigan state university novi and troy campuses and eastern michigan and we have a learning center in livonia it's eight hours all you have to do is make a 29 dollar donation to charity you'll get a 200 uh, page textbook if you'd like to register go to retirement planning edu.org that's retirement planning edu.org or call 800-240-8981 and we'll be back with kirk and paul right after this back with financial instructors kurt cassidy and dr paul mettler they're with the retirement education foundation and this is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us today here on the program. I'm Megan Mozak. If you haven't signed up for the courses that you've heard Kirk and Paul talk about, we want to make sure you have the information to do that today. Why? Well, because these courses fill up really quickly. And now more than ever is the time for you to gain confidence about your retirement future. And to do that, you need to attend these courses. And here's how the courses are set up. It's either a one or two day course. It's, it's two days. It's a couple hours each day. If you go with a one-day course, it's about seven to eight hours. And keep in mind, these are taught at local major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather attend from your home, well, the good news is there's a virtual option. Here's what you have to do to register. Either way, Call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. Or you can go to the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Write that down. It's retirementplanningedu.org. And for our listeners today, it's a $29 donation to charity to attend. So make sure you make plans to get registered now. Kirk and Paul want to ask you this. When it comes to spending in retirement, I think there's some misconceptions here about it. Spending money in retirement. What is the difference between average retirees and their spending habits versus those retirees who maybe we'd classify as being above average and what they plan to spend? Well, I think where many people make mistakes, again, thinking they're average and they have significantly greater than average resources when they retire, is they 
depend on the general rule that most of our industry deploys and utilizes, most of the calculators on u- online uses, most books that you read are going to tell you, uh, the number that is most often quoted is 78%. You're going to need 78% of your income in retirement, 78% of what you originally earned while you were working for retirement. And and, and I, want, I want to tell you why that is so wrong and where people are walking into a trap and or people are way underspending what they should be spending. Okay, so it starts by understanding the research that was done to come up with that 78% number, 40% of the people who participated in that study, so 40% of all baby boomers get 100% of their income from Social Security. That's all they have. 40% of the baby boomers, 100% of their income is coming from Social Security. That's it. So that significantly skews the data in that study. What that study concludes is if you read the whole study is that 66% of retirees will spend more money in the first five years of retirement than they did the five years prior to retirement. And that is what we experience. That's what we see. So if you are average, if you're the average baby boomer retiring with $200,000, that is what average is, $200,000. You have to protect your principal. You're going to have to live on less in retirement. You have no choice. But if you have resources, you've saved money, you have 700, a million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, you're not going to spend 78% of your income when you have 100% of your time that you've never had before. What are you going to do with your time? You're going to spend money and you should and you can. Paul, please tell them what they're missing. I mean, it doesn't... No, I- yeah, it's no, so I mean, frustrating. It, 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 it's frustrating and, and, and it's, it's, but it's consistent, right? Consistently, we meet people in, our, in the classes who, 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 who believe what you just said, who believe and, and they put together budgets, right? How many times did some, they put together budgets and they say, well, I'm really, you know, I've been spending $100,000, but I'm only going to spend in retirement 60000 because, you know, when I look at my utility bills or my mortgage. And what they don't think about is that when's the last time you took a vacation? When's the last time you fixed up, fixed up your house? When's the last time you did the things you really wanted to do? Those, what, you know, those one-time expenses. Kirk, I've never met anybody who went into retirement saying, you know what? I'm looking forward to not doing anything in retirement, right? I'm looking right. forward to sitting home and, 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 and doing nothing. There's a reason why we call that phase the go-go years, right? There's a reason. You've worked your yeah. whole life. This Paul, is the time you want to do things. And if you have the money, you're going to want to do things, right? We're going to want to do things. 100%, Paul. I mean, look, you got, you're spending 2,500 hours a year working. So when you're not working, why do you think you're going to spend less? Why would you think you want to spend less in retirement? You're not. Now, now to be fair, and Paul said it, there's the go-go years when you're going to spend the money, Right. And, and somewhere around 78, 80, things really start to slow down. You start spending a lot less. There's a lot of reasons why you spend a lot less money. But that first five to 10 years of retirement, you're going to spend and you should spend and you can spend. I know we're going to talk about this next segment, but we're going to tease the this whole concept that you should protect your principal. Folks, if you are average and only have $200,000 saved for retirement, you have to protect your principal. You have to. And that's a general rule. It's not a bad rule for the average general retiree. But if you have a million dollars, two million, three million, four million dollars, you do not need to protect your principal. You do not need to reduce your spending during times of market volatility if you plan properly. Stop using rules that were designed for people that have less resources than you have. There is an agenda. There's a hidden agenda that people don't like us talking about, but our, there is a reason the financial service industry has adopted this protect your principles, spend less money. We'll talk about that next segment. There's a reason why this is still how your, your retirements are being planned and built and why the calculators on all the major financial firms are still telling you to, that you're not going to need as much in retirement. They're using average general rules even when you've got millions of dollars saved. That isn't freedom. 
It is time to let money serve you. And if you have the resources and you have the ability to plan and know how to plan, then you will have the freedom to spend. And it's hard to watch, Paul. It's hard to watch. And I I know I cut you short, Paul, in this segment. So I'm just going to go into wrapping up the segment. But it is hard to watch the thousands of people over the years that have come to our class knowing that they came in thinking that they, they had to follow these average general rules, not knowing that they had a much above, much above average resources. This is why you need to attend one of our eight-hour classes, get one of our 200-page textbooks, and come to one of the universities, or we'll even stream it to you while we're teaching from the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. And here's the way that you can get signed up for the foundation's courses. These are deep dives into all things retirement planning. I would not recommend you go into retirement without attending these courses. This is how important these are. Remember, the landscape is changing as far as retirement goes. This is not your grandfather's retirement. This is a time for you now to carry a lot of this burden on your shoulders. You have to figure out a lot of uh, the moving parts around retirement income and taxation, health care, how you're going to account for legacy planning, a lot of things to figure out. The good news is the foundation, they make this a lot easier for you, giving you the confidence to go into retirement. So here's how to register. You can call 800-240-8981 or go to the website. And when you're at the website, you're going to see all of the different locations where these courses are held. And you can see the dates and find one that works best for you. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. These courses are taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather attend virtually, you can do that as well. Look for that option online. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. All right. We've been talking about average retirees versus non-average retirees. The interesting thing, though, Kirk and Paul, is that by and large, the financial services industry treats us all like we're average, right? Well, that's the sad part, Megan. You nailed it. I mean, the, the, the financial service industry basically says everybody, I don't care if you come to me with $3 million, $5 million, or 200000 Everyone gets what an average retiree would get in terms of the strategies that are deployed, the income that they're going to allow, the taxation planning around. It's, it's all cookie cutter. It's a one-size-fits-all. Fi- and I'm, we're going to lay out this segment, all the reasons why it is in the financial service industry's benefit to make it one size fits all cookie cutter. And I think you guys can connect a couple of these dots easily yourselves. The first is if something is repeatable and scalable, easy to reproduce, it can be done quickly. It can be done without much time. Therefore, That is a more profitable business model. The more general we make things, cookie cutter, one size fits all, the industry, financial service industry makes the planning and the invest everything, the more people they can meet, therefore the more they can sell. We are still, the financial service industry is a business. It's a for-profit business. And the most profitable way to make money in any business is to be scalable, recreatable, systems, processes that are duplicatable and quick and easy. So that's the obvious one. The less obvious one that a lot of people, you should connect these dots, but it it sort of, it doesn't connect because, because they prey on fear. They, I would argue, manipulate your fear and anxiety of outliving your money. We know that is the number one fear of retirees is that they're going to outlive their money. So therefore they can come up with rules based upon and take advantage of those anxiety and fears of you outliving your money by coming up with things like protect your principal. 
You have to protect your principal or you'll only need 78% of your income in retirement. So we're going to tell you an alternative to that in the next segment, but here's why they're doing it. The less money you spend, the more money they are managing and they can bill. They can, the less you take out of your accounts, the more money they make. That's the bottom line. So they're going to tell you when we have major market events, spend less. Why? (laughs) Because their income doesn't go down more than just the market volatility. It it is so backwards. It's so frustrating to watch. Paul, I I, I don't know how to tell people that there's an agenda here. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, you know, and and the agenda has real consequences. Right. I mean, I mean, these are real people who follow these rules and and they can't go back. I mean, think of all the people we've met in our classes over the years who've been in retirement for five or 10 years and come up to you or come up to me and say, I wish I would have met you five or 10 years ago because I've been following these rules in retirement. I've been living on less, a lot less because that's what I was told to do. And I'm working longer. And, and, you know, now I'm, now I'm 70 and I can't do some of the things that I could have done in my sixties. You know, you, you say this all the time. There are no do-overs. You only get to retire once, right? You only get these, we don't know how long you're going to have those go-go years. You don't know how long you're going to be healthy enough to do the things you want to do. There's nothing worse than regret, right? You, this is the time to enjoy it. And so these general rules have serious consequences and I, I don't know. I find it so frustrating and upsetting when I meet people like that who've lived the retirement years wrong because they've been following these general rules when they didn't need to. Uh, Paul, so one thing we can, I mean, I can say this. I know I, I don't think the regulators would like us saying it, but I'm going to say it. I, I am nine out of 10 people. I, I'll, I'll say that for. So I have a little wiggle room. I don't want to get in any, any trouble. But you guys are under, if you are above average in your savings for retirement, meaning you have over a half million, over a million, over 2 million, over 3 million. If you are above average in your savings, I promise you, when you come to this class, you will learn that you can spend significantly more than you are or were going to spend in retirement. As a result, if you haven't retired, you're going to be able to retire earlier than you planned in thought. And I think we're going to talk about it next segment, but it's the magic number is not 3.3%. That is, that is the financial service industry's magic number. It's been 4% for years. Now they're using 3.3%. The numbers we're going to teach you is to take distributions in your 60s of 6, 7, 8% per year with zero chance of outliving your cash flow. You've got to come to the class. You are, you are falling for the general rules that you that just don't apply to you because you have more resources than the average retiree. And I know many of you are very sophisticated financially. You're really sharp. That's who's coming to our classes, the engineers, the CEOs, the CFOs, the CPAs, the attorneys. Really bright people are coming to class. You don't understand what you don't know. I'm telling you there's things you don't know about retirement that our industry isn't teaching you. You haven't read you need to come learn how to do this the right way. It's a reason why the classes are eight hours in length. There's a reason it's 200 page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation and you can attend in person at most every major university where we're teaching at, or we're streaming the classes live so you can watch us teach us from the university. Go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org to register. Much more on the other side of the break. Stay with us. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, everyone. We're glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and I want to direct you to the website. This is the Foundation's website where you can find out the location and the times, the dates, for the courses that we've been telling you about today here on the show. And these are retirement planning courses where you're going to understand the philosophy around what it takes to retire well in the 21st century. Can't do it on a hope and a prayer. It takes a plan. It takes a very highly constructed plan and one that you need a a real deep dive into to understand the moving parts and all the things that are necessary for that. So we want you to get registered today before these courses fill up. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 
240-8981. Here's that web address again. You can write it down. It's retirementplanningedu. Dot org. Make plans to attend in person at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, or Oakland University. If you'd like to attend virtually, you can do that as well. Just get the information at the website. Again, it's retirementplanningedu.org. All right. So Kirk and Paul, you know, I hear a lot about protecting your principal, especially when the market's going crazy. Uh, principal protection seems to be something that's really high up there on the financial services industry checklist for soon-to-be retirees. You say not so fast. Why is that? Megan, it is remarkable how conditioned and brainwashed people have become over the years with this concept of protecting your principal. I'm telling you, when people, we thousands of people come to our classes since we've started almost 10 years ago. Heck, it might be over 10 years now. Consistently, like the most important variable is protecting principal with people walking to the classes. The financial service industry has spent ungodly amounts of money conditioning you to create that fear that you're going to outlive your money in retirement so they could create this protect your principal rule. And look, we get it. If you are average, if you're the average baby boomer who is only going to retire with $200,000 saved, you're going to have to protect your principal. I would even argue someone with, you know, four or $500,000, you're going to need to be careful and protect that principal. But when we get, you get close to a million or two or three or four or five, when we get over like 2 million, this is silly. So you're telling me you want to die with the same amount of money that you had when you retired. That is protecting your principal, meaning I'm retiring today. I have $3 million saved. That means I want $3 million when I die. Okay. So to be fair, there is a segment of baby boomers that legacy, what they leave to their children is really, really important to them. They want to leave wealth. We find more often than not, that is an excuse they use that excuse because, but the truth is they're really fearful of outliving their money. A controlled spend down of your principal is fine. As long as you have built in guarantees that you can never outlive your cash flow. That's something we teach in the class. The difference between outliving your money, outliving your cash flow. How do you protect yourself from health events and long-term care events in your eighties? Every possible trap in retirement. We've been teaching these classes for years. We have been in the private practice for years doing advanced comprehensive retirement planning strategies. We know the traps. We're going to teach you how to avoid them. And if you are avoiding them, then a controlled spend down of your principal is fine. It's actually encouraged. It's the only way you can retire on time. Look, that's why we can take six, seven, eight percent per year out of your investments beginning in your 60s, early to mid 60s, without any chance of outliving your cash flow if you plan properly. It's what we teach, Paul. And it's really frustrating. Protecting principal, that just means what, Paul? They can bill more. The financial service industry can bill more because you're never spending down your money. Right? Yeah, it's crazy. It, 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 all, it also means, Kirk, that they don't have to actually do any, any real planning either, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it, right, it's very easy as an advisor, to protect someone's principal. It doesn't really take a lot of time to plan for that, right? But to really do a maximum spend down where someone gets all the money they want and never outlive it, that actually takes a lot of time to plan. And, and as you know, average advisors not planning. And I think that's the disconnect. I think the reality is, you said it, part of it is our financial service industry makes more money by protecting principal, but they also save a lot of time, right? They don't have to actually do true planning. And and then again, it's something in the class we talk about. We, we teach people, how, what does a real plan look like? And part of a real plan is if legacy isn't important to you, you can actually spend down your principal and never outlive it. And we, we talk about strategies related to that. Well, and, and so if you translate that, right, you translate, okay, that means I can retire earlier, right? Because now I've got $2 million I have enough. saved. That's right. Right. I, I can take more than seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. I've got two million dollars saved and I'm sixty five years old. I, I, I can actually take a hundred and fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Hell, I can retire now. I don't need to wait until I'm seventy 
to have three million or or seventy two to have three million to come close to my. So it it, it snowballs. People are underspending what they otherwise could spend. And it's because of the financial service industry. I'm not exaggerating. They're unwilling to spend time to build your plans. Look, Paul said it. Spend time means they can't meet more people. That means they sell less. And if you protect your principal, that means the they're, they're, those dollars they're managing don't go down. They've locked in their income, their revenue, right? You're not spending down the re- So they don't like this idea of a max spend down plan, which is a couple of the plans that we show in the class teaching people how to do a max spend down plan and then teaching people if legacy is important, how can you actually do a little bit of both? You can if you plan properly and understand all the right tools for the situation. It's really I'll tell you, Paul, people have been listening to us for a long time. And if you're one of those people who are listening to us for a long time and have not registered for a class, why? It can't be the $29. It goes to charity and you're above average. You have the resources. You, it's not the $29. That's irrelevant. It's, it's, it's an arrogance or a confidence. I know this more than them. If nothing else, go to the website. Go to the website and look. watch the webinars. Read the white papers, read the quizzes, read the syllabus, learn what we're going to teach you. If nothing else, start by going to the website. And if you go to the website and you still don't go to a class, then I would say you're a glutton for your own punishment. Because I'm telling you, there's so many more variables in retirement than uh, what it took to accumulate your wealth. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org retirementplanningedu.org. The classes are eight hours in a 200-page textbook. Please register. And we'll be back more with Kirk and Paul right after this. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak here. Glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm here with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. It's been a great show today so far. Kirk and Paul are with the Retirement Education Foundation, and as you know, the foundation hosts courses that we'd like you to make plans to attend, and we want you to do that today because these are courses that fill up quickly. They're very popular. They're intended to allow you to walk away with far more confidence about your retirement future than you currently have right now. And with all that's going on in the world, now's the time to get registered. We want to make sure that you enjoy a great retirement. It's what it's all about. It's what you've worked so hard for. So here's how you do it. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. These courses are taught at major Michigan universities including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. So call 800-240-8981 or go online to register, retirementplanningedu.org. You know, we talked about fear earlier, Kirk and Paul, and You know, it sounds like when you set out and you do your retirement planning correctly, you acknowledge the fact you are not an average retiree, right? You can't use cookie cutter approaches. When you do it right, really, there's a lot of freedom to be had here. You do it wrong and the reverse is true. You don't have the freedom. Is that right? That's that's it, Megan. I mean, it's interesting the number of retirees who have a lot of resources that never find a way to truly have freedom in retirement. We see it. I mean, we see it constantly at our classes, people who have a lot of wealth. I mean, significant amounts of wealth, but because of fear, anxiety, a lack of planning, because the industry has convinced them to use these, the financial service industry convinced them to to use these general rules and or they think they're average. I mean, we meet millionaires all the time thinking everyone retires with a million, two million, three, four, five. Seriously, we meet them all the time. And, and it's sometimes difficult for them to hear that they are not close to average, that the average is only going to retire with $200,000 saved, that they are way above average. So therefore, they should have something individualized custom to them. Here's one of the, the big things that we see regularly in in. I know this really bothers Paul. He talks about this a lot. Is this because the industry really teaches you to protect your principal, really protect your principal. And so when we have a major market event, 
or life event, we're gonna. What you're supposed to do is reduce your spending, and that is that's not freedom. That, that's not freedom. You don't reduce your spending because we're in a recession, or because you don't like who's being someone who's being elected or impeached or or the administration or or it's or there's unrest in the in in the Middle East or or problem in Russia. Stop. Stop, you're going to constantly, or they're going to take my Social Security away from me. Stop. Stop. That's not freedom. You, if, every, if you're afraid of everything and you're going to change your lifestyle every time something bad happens, then you've never, ever found freedom, in, and you have to. You, you're still serving money. At some point, you got to let this money serve you. And the only way, the only way you're going to let the money serve you is if you have the education to understand what the traps are and what you have done in your retirement plan to be able to to pivot and adjust during those to- those bad times without changing your spending and your lifestyle. You, you, you know, Kirk, I, I think this whole show is about what is average. Like, what's the average investor? If you are the average investor, right? If you have less two hundred thousand dollars or less for retirement. Then, then you may, then you have to. I think it's fair to say, if the market goes down, you're going to have to adjust your spending, right? Yes. You're you're not going to be free. You're going to adjust your spending depending on these external events. But if you're not average, right? Everybody wants to enter retirement and be free to do what you want to do. And if you're not average, guess what? You could be free to do what you want to do. I, it's, I, I know people who are listening don't believe that. I think most people believe when the market crashes, they have to cut back. And it's hard to imagine that you're going to keep spending the same as you've been spending regardless of the market corrects. The end of the day, that's freedom. And if you plan right, and if you're not average, you can have that, right? You, you, and, and it's, as you said, Kirk, it's frustrating. It's frustrating meeting people who have lived the retirement years not free when they could have. And why don't they? Because their advisor never showed them that they that they actually could spend regardless of all these external events. And I don't know about you. I find that so incredibly frustrating and disturbing. Right. There's nothing worse. Paul, I, look, I know we, we we avoid because this is the charities radio show and we're on here. Of course. As financial instructors. But right. But but Paul and I are in the financial service industry. We have a private practice. We are now our private practice is unique. It's different. We only help about forty percent of the people that actually want our help. Um, we we have a very advanced type of approach to retirement planning, and I so so all I can tell you is that, and I can only use this as an example. Since we've been in business, we've gone through many many mar- major market events and. And turnover in in administrations, different presidents. And and we're not exaggerating. Our client, not one of our clients has changed their lifestyle during the 2008 financial crisis, COVID, the uh, most recent, what we've been going through recently, even some early in the 2000s. No one gave up any of their travel, their spending, their lifestyle, their home improvements. If they were members at a club, they didn't give up their club membership. No one changed their lifestyle. Why? Because through education and individualized planning, they have been able to find the freedom to let their money serve them. I, d- you're, you're, without this course, I, it is unless you're very wealthy, it's going to be very difficult for you to find that. you got to start with just the education. That's what we're doing in the class. We're just giving you the education to know if someone is really giving you good advice or bad advice. You're going to learn all the levers that you need to pull. you got to attend one of our eight-hour courses. You have nothing to lose but a don- $29 donation to charity. So if you'd like to attend or just check out the website, you're going to go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. You're going to learn, you're going to see the syllabus. You're going to see some webinars, some quizzes we've put out there, white papers that are out there. You're going to get an opportunity to sign up for one of our eight-hour courses at one of the major universities. You're going to see that you get a 200-page textbook. This is an advanced retirement planning course. Register. Please register. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 
1-800-529-8981. And there's more when we come back. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. It is a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation for the Retirement Education Hour. This has been a really insightful show today. You know, Kirk and Paul, we've talked about a lot. I want to make sure people know about the courses that they can register for because just like this show, you know, we really do discuss a wide variety of topics that you need to know about as you launch into your retirement future. You owe it to yourself to get registered today before these courses fill up. They're taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. Here's how you register. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call to register, 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, we spent a lot of time talking about above average retirees, above average both in their knowledge base and in their wealth base. And if there are people out there listening, and I know there are, who are above average in those areas when it comes to their knowledge about retirement planning or their wealth that they've accumulated, why is it so important in particularly for them to attend these courses? Well, honestly, it's it's why we do these shows and, and teach these classes And look, to accumulate wealth, often there's a direct correlation with having above average knowledge in finances, right? I'm not saying always, but but there tends to be a correlation. They have above average knowledge, therefore they end up above average wealth. If you're above average, you've done some good things to accumulate your wealth, right? The disconnect for people is they don't understand because... Frankly, the financial service industry isn't telling you, teaching you, or showing you. You haven't seen it. That's why you need to go to the website and just see what a plan looks like. Start by looking at what a real retirement plan looks like. There are so many more variables in distributing your wealth, creating income, taking care of taxes, protecting your surviving spouse, protecting legacy, protecting health care. Where are the traps in a period of life that you've never experienced? This is the first time you're going to do it. After being so successful in the first phase of your life, you've been so successful. So it's not an accident. I know people ask us and it it drives, I don't love doing it, but we, there's so many times throughout the radio show, I think in and out of every segment, we say, you need to register for one of our classes and this is how you do it. And we keep bringing it up is because we're trying to touch some, all of you in some different way to recognize there are levers I didn't know about. There's so many things around taxes and income planning. You you very well-educated, smart, high net worth individuals have zero clue about. And I'm telling you, your CPAs aren't doing 30 years of forward tax projections. They're not doing it. It's not what they do. Your financial planners aren't. This is why the class is so important, Paul. This is why and, and why we keep asking people and we keep telling people, this is where you go register. And we keep, I mean, I know it's, it gets monotonous, but well, it, people, it, it, some it, people it, don't do it. <laughs> It seems it seems somewhat ludicrous that just because you were smart at something, maybe you were an amazing engineer or an amazing doctor, you may be incredibly smart at what you do, that somehow you believe that that, that somehow gets generalized to being amazing at retirement planning. I mean, if you're an amazing engineer and brilliant, did you do your own surgery on your knee? right? Did you do your heart surgery? No. Just because you're smart in an area does not generalize to being smart in the financial services. But for some reason, Kirk, for some reason it happens, you know, you meet people, we meet people all the time who were really smart at what they did in their job or really smart at accumulating their wealth. And they somehow believe that means that they're smart enough to plan their retirement. And I'm sorry, it sounds rude, but it doesn't translate that way. It just doesn't. I was going to say, Paul, it's it's funny you said that. And I mean, look, we've got in our private practice CFOs for Fortune 500 companies, tons of CFOs. We get tons of CFOs coming to our class and CPAs and attorneys, it, it, people who actually know about finance and money. But they the smartest, you know what the smartest people know? The smartest people know when they don't know something. 
And I'm trying to tell you the really smart people come to the class to learn about what they don't know. If you go to our website, you're going to quickly realize there's a lot about retirement I didn't know. And so if you're really smart as we think we are, then know that there's areas that you don't know as much as you think you know about and learn. Paul, quickly, give us some things we cover in the class. Well, you mentioned tax planning, which is huge, right? I mean, if at the end of the day, we all know and believe that taxes are are cheap, taxes are on sale right now. Taxes are going to go up in the future. And if you can reduce your tax liability in the future, you don't have to spend as much money. Tax planning is huge in retirement, right? Income planning, right? At the end of the day, if you can, if you have accounts to pivot to that aren't volatile, then you don't, you know, we, we talk about sequence of return risk, right? Planning around sequence of return risk is huge. We talk all about the legacy, right? Long-term care, huge expense. We talk a lot about long-term care planning. There are so many things that you have to think about in retirement. What happens when, if you're married, a surviving spouse, your, your, your spouse passes away, what happens to that surviving spouse? What happens to their tax liability? What happens to their ability to spend or take care of themselves? These are things that we talk about in the class. There are so many traps you don't even know exist because no one talks about them. And so, Paul, you talked about a lot of good things. I, the one thing that I take away is how do, when can I retire and how much can I spend in retirement to make sure I don't outlive my cash flow, right? And so there's an advanced way to do this that very few people are talking about. And we're going to give you at least the knowledge to know the levers exist. Maybe you won't be able to do it, but you'll at least know if you're hiring somebody, whether they really know how to do retirement planning or not. Again, it's an eight-hour course. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to check out the website, look at the webinars. We go through what a retirement plan looks like. We go through Social Security white papers. There is so much good content down there. We also allow you to stream the classes live from the universities. Again, register at retirementplanningedu.org. Hope to see you there. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.